Aloha, top of the morning, friends and family. If this is your first time to our channel, let me be the first to let you know that we upload beautifully edited cinematic masterpieces here. But this video is uncut. And in today's uncut, I thought I would throw my hat into the ring in the conversation of the impending recession and its effect on the reptile industry. Now, caveat, I'm not technically a professional in the reptile industry. I don't have nearly as much experience as some of the other folks I've heard talking about it. Uh, I don't even claim to be some kind of financial wizard or genius. In fact, I could call myself the opposite. However, I do have a little bit of insight because I do breed snakes and I do sell snakes and I have become fairly successful at it, one would say. And uh, it's a little warm in here. There, there's a take coming from Jesse, who from Freedom Breeder. His take is much different than mine, or at least he has different, much different points than I'm going to make in today's video. And he's going to be releasing uh, that video tomorrow on the Freedom Breeder channel. So go check that out as well. I think it's a pretty interesting take. Some of you might really get some good insight from that, much different than what I'll, you'll probably hear today. I'm also feeding snakes, so I'm going to be feeding while I do this because it's a very busy life over here. Lots of things to do. Locked my keys in the car. Had to get removed. Uh, had to get let back into my vehicle. So uh, time that I is usually pretty tight around here got a little extra tight, so I am multitasking. Um, so, the, the, what I'm going to say here probably is just the, my two favorite things that I've heard so far in, as far as actions to take with the impending uh, recession that is coming and how it will affect what you might do with your plans for breeding snakes and maybe just overall in general. Check this out. That's one hungry hog nose. Hungry, hungry hog nose. Come on, it's right here. It's right there. Get it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's tasty, isn't it? Oh, that's the good stuff. That is the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Eat that. Oh, so good. So tasty. Num num. Now, can you go back inside? Because I need to feed other snakes and talk. Can, can we do this? Can we? Whoa. You're cool. Just go back in there, eat inside here. There you go. All right, see ya, see ya. Sorry, we were rudely interrupted by myself feeding a snake. Projects, hunkering down, maybe not just pairing every single snake that you were preparing to plan and just honing in a little bit more. I've heard many experienced breeders talk about this and I, I agree that just honing in on those projects that are maybe multiple years out and not producing things that you're planning with the end result for just like, you know, in the next year or two when there might not be as much of a market or much of a buyer's market for, for people just getting wh whichever snake people don't just have extra cash floating around, uh, generally speaking. So focusing down on things that will be end resulting, <laughs> the end result of those projects that you're looking at, you know, maybe coming to a head or come to their culmination in, say, four or five years instead of just this year or next year. You know, considering your pairings, like uh, something I was talking with Zach Schrader about last night that I thought was really a good idea was that, like if you have, you know, instead of just like pairing together incomplete dominant clown. Let's let's see here. How about, how about a perfect example here? We've got uh, NC Red Stripe Spot Nose GHI Clown, and I could pair him to... Uh, my yellow belly clown head pied over here or our clown pied which might not be the worst idea or our, our pied head clown might even be a better idea no just kidding i'm not doing any of those but what you could do you know make some double recessives you know pair, pair them to a sunset female and make double hats because down the line we're going to have that genetic testing available and you'll be able to pick out the no they're all going to be they're all going to be 100 head never mind Point is, long-term projects, really honing in on those long-term projects and not thinking about just the next year or two, but several years out. That's a good one. 
Uh, the other thing I heard was from Jason, and I'm spacing on his last name right now. Jason, he's got a, he works mostly with Boas, uh, Jason's Exotics. He has a channel here on YouTube. It's really good. Um, and I, sorry, Jason, I'm spacing on your last name. It's he's over in the East Coast. Anyway, he had, he had a really good point in a video. He was talking about talking about the reptile industry and where it's headed with this recession. And one of the things that he talked about in his video that I really liked was you know helping other people out and shouting other people out and just kind of supporting each other through uh, what's what's impending here and just being supportive of other people, other breeders, and just shouting each other out and that that I thought was really cool. And I didn't heat these. Usually I put these rodents in hot water, but they have no heat right now. So I'm gonna be a little weird. I know it's not it's not heated at all, but will you eat it anyway? How about you eat it anyway, even though there's no heat on it? Come on. Just eat it. There you go. Yeah, you I, I totally spaced on putting these in the hot water first, which really ups the feeding response. So we'll get these next ones in the hot water. Those are the two main things. Not really uh, super in depth. You know, I'm not like I said. I'm a, I'm kind of a financial dunce. Uh, but here, how about this distraction? The size of this ball python shed. That's a ball python shed right there. That thing's massive. Ooh, no, there was a third thing. There was a third thing to consider that was my own that I didn't hear from somebody else, which is to continue focusing on growing the hobby growing keepers, inspiring other people to keep reptiles, you know, putting out videos or just going out in the public, doing uh, educational programs. Even though we're going into a recession, there's still lots of kids that are going to have birthdays and their parents are still going to want them to have birthday parties. Go out there and like make little cards and put yourself out there that you have reptiles and that you'd love to go to parties and, and uh, share them with kids. The next generation, you know, we've got a little bubble, a nice bubble here of people that are in deeper in the hobby that are, you know, breeders or just really enthusiasts. But we really make up a small percentage of the entire reptile keeping world. The majority of people out there that keep reptiles just have one, maybe two pet reptiles. And that's growing every day because of people learning about how cool it is to be able to keep a reptile as a pet and what great pets they make. And that's the majority. So the more people we get on that, because at the current, current day, we are at a spot where the majority of people think that snakes are scary, creepy, slimy, gross, etc. And there's a small minority of us that think they're cool. What I think our job and responsibility to do, especially headed into the place we're headed with this industry, uh, being a recession, that, that's a global thing that's happening, in my opinion, not just something in our industry that's happening all over the world, but to grow it in that time and just keep on, you know, turning kids on to to snakes and reptiles and let, showing them how cool they are. And there's a lot of great people out there doing that in a big way, um, most bigger than myself. But uh, I'm also going to be getting back into doing shows. We took a break there because we've just had the one car for a while and it makes it kind of tough. But Next month, we'll finally be getting a second vehicle, and I'm going to be really getting back into doing educational shows. So I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and do that myself as well. But that's that was the third thing that I thought is a good thing to do moving forward into what we're headed into in this economy. And let's see if we get this clown pied female to take a rat really quickly. She's been really weird lately about striking it, but then just dropping it. It's alive and you want it. Several times I've, that's happened and then I come back the next morning and she just leaves it. So hopefully not this time because it's been a year since she had a clutch for her. She didn't produce last year. She took the season off, um, which is fine. But I just hope she wouldn't take two seasons off in a row. And I hope that she eats that rat and doesn't just leave it sitting there. It is what it is. Because that's definitely the one that's talking about long-term projects. That is the Sunset Clown Pied Queen. She's the one that is crucial for her to have a clutch for this Sunset Clown Pied project that I've been working on 
for quite some time, and it's probably going to be, uh, I very well may have grandkids before that project uh, comes to fruition. Yeah. Mmm, it's tasty. You want it. You really, really want it. I know it's bright out here. It's bright for the video. But you want that anyway. Just eat it. It's good for you. It's nutritious. It's delicious. Come on, be vicious. Those are my wishes. Just seriously, come on. Gosh, I'm a weirdo, man. How about you? Oh yeah, you ready. Mm, 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 mm. There we go. See, why couldn't you do that? You could have done that. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Um, those are my ramblings. Leave a comment down below if you'd like to hear more of them. And I'll give more of them. But I'd really like to hear what you guys think about everything that's happening moving forward in the comments below. That's really what I'd like to hear is all of your opinions on, on what's coming in the next year, in the next two years. I really would love to go down there and read all, all of your thoughts. I, I'm sure some of you have some great thoughts on it. I'd really love to get a rounded perspective through the comments of you guys. And uh, in the meantime, while you're leaving that comment, don't forget to go and download the Morph Market app. Um, I have it on my phone now, and it's great. I mean, getting the messages from people, um, instead of waiting for an email, it's like, you know, you're more like direct messaging. Now that I have the app, instead of waiting for emails, come or searching through my email, just keeping in more direct and quick communication with customers, it's fantastic. It's excellent. Highly recommend. And not just because they're sponsors of the channel. I'm done. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you in the next video. Aloha.